Okay, everybody, welcome to Turn Dog Talks 2. I'm delighted to be um, joined today by Mitch Joel, who is the owner and founder of Twist Image and also the blog Six Pixels of Separation. So, Joel, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks, Matthew. Happy to be here. It's, um, I've, I've been a big fan of your blog for a while. I'm, being a marketer, there's obviously select marketers out there who I always pay particular p- t- attention to, and you are one of them. So I think it'll be a fantastic insight what you will offer today. So before we get going, would you please just give a quick intro about who you are and what it is that you do? Sure. So my name is Mitch Joel, as you said. I've got a digital marketing agency with three other business partners called Twist Image that we've been at since about 2000, two offices. Um, and I've got this blog, podcast, and book called Six Pixels of Separation. And I've got a new book coming out in May called Control Alt Delete, uh, which is actually sitting right here. And the reason I don't have a lot of time is because I got to get it back to the publisher because it's finished. Um, and and life is really exciting. You know, I mean, my big thing is helping brands understand what these digital channels mean and how they can best connect to consumers in a world where we're all connected. Absolutely, it's uh, as more people join the digital revolution, the more importance it is first to all get it right, because otherwise it just becomes chaos. So, when can we expect to see Control Alt Delete if it's just on its way to the publishers? Yeah, it'll be out in May of 2013. So uh, this is literally the final chance I have to see it before I get back the uh, the approved uh, I guess the, the, I'll, I'll get the the, um, the advanced copies of it and yeah. um, it's, it's going to be exciting it's, it's, uh, I think it's a, a million times better than six pixels of separation I'm really careful to say that because I'm worried it won't sell as much so <laughs> I get nervous I'm like it's so much better like I hope people buy it but I think that that's always the uh, the dilemma of being someone somewhat creative where you put something out and you just hope people appreciate it that's it. You put so much of your heart and soul into it, and then everything's fine until that last minute when you do let it fly the nest, and you think, "Oh God, there is no turning back after this." this I mean, it. you know, the, yeah, it used to be more like that, to be honest, because you know, books were this sort of like anchor in in careers. But I mm-hmm. think because of blogging and podcasting and just the articles I write and the places where my work is, I'm fortunate enough to have a place. I feel a little less of that pressure because I, you know, I, I, I have the humility to look back and go, boy, like, boy, did I get some stuff wrong. And I think that for sure by the time the book even comes out, some stuff may even be wrong. And uh, the, the fact remains that I have a more organic content creative avenue and it is the blog. So, so thankfully from the time the book is sent off, which is, you know, here we are sitting in, in I guess, almost December, uh, in those, think about, you know, December, January, February, March, April, May, There'll be a lot of blogging being done between then and, and, and now, so, so hopefully there'll, there'll, there'll have to be a continuum of content there. Well, I think that's a good way of looking at it, and I think the key word you said there was that organic growth, because things are changing so fast, and who knows where we'll be in May. So, And it's interesting that you said you've um, obviously made a few sort of issues along the way, and this video, this interview is all in aid of my upcoming book, The Success Mistake, where I ask people like yourself about the mistakes you've made and how you overcame them. So let us kick straight off into that. I'm intrigued to know what you think one of your biggest business mistakes is. Um, tell us a story around that and then how you kind of overcame it. Well, let me let me throw it back to you. Is would a business mistake be something where um, I didn't capitalize on something as much as possible? Like, is it a money thing, or is it more of a sort of feeling thing? Uh, what, what, what type of what type of mistake do you want? We've got them all. <laughs> well, absolutely anything. To be honest, there's been a mixture of um, all of them so far. But yeah, I I thought that a lot of them would be centered around money, and not as many as. Um, I thought a lot of them are around sort of the emotional issues, so right. that kind of mistake of not capitalizing, yeah. maybe. I so it's an interesting question, and I I think I I struggle with it because while if I tell the story, you may see it as a mistake. I don't think it was a mistake, um, and and part of it is because the reason why I typically make decisions, I don't make business decisions, and I don't make emotional decisions and I don't make pragmatic decisions. I typically make decisions that are driven by what I want to do. And um, I, I, I'm sort of this strange person who doesn't care much about money. I love money. I love having a lot of it. But I won't make decisions based on it and I'm willing to leave it all if I feel it's not who I am. So what we might quantify as a mistake uh, would probably be 
prior to Twist Image, so we're probably talking about 2000, 2001. The company started in 2000, actually joined in 2002. Um, I, I, start, I went back to the music industry. I used to be in the music industry and started a record label with a, a business partner. I'm in, I live in Montreal and this guy was in Toronto and it was called Distort Entertainment. And we were very lucky to have uncovered this band called Alexis on Fire. Um, and, and the band was a really different type of band, very heavy band. It was into heavy music. And I saw them in, in a basement bar in St. Catharines, Ontario. And I turned to my business partner and said, you know, I think this thing could sell maybe 2,500 copies if we're lucky and if we do a good job of this. And so we signed this band. And what we really liked about the band, along with the band as, as an entirety, was one of there's two singers, one of them screams, one of them's more melodic. Uh, the more melodic one had some acoustic music that I was actually very struck by. And I thought it was quite good. And my, my comment was we should try and sign him as well. And um, it, it was interesting because at the time I had just met my now business partners at Twist Image and I was sort of in these two worlds. One world was I had this record label and we had major label distribution at the time it was with EMI and now it's with Universal. And the other side was that I was really, really taken by this ability to help brands in this sort of new digital world, which is, I mean, both worlds of mine were very similar. It's not like one was different from the other. I'd been doing both for a long time. And I made the decision to actually do Twist Image and go down this, this road. And about I'd say a month after that, uh, this band, Alexis on Fire, became massive, like multi-platinum. They won the Juno Awards, which is the equivalent to the Grammys up here in Canada. Uh, that singer who we signed went on to launch his own career with a band called City in Color, which has also done exceptionally well in many parts of the world beyond Canada. And you sort of realize that, wow, like I started this thing, we discovered them, and I, I sort of let it go, basically just for what I put into the company, the, you know, my, my business partner paid me back and I'm sure enough, three weeks later the band explodes and he's off buying homes and motorcycles and fun things like that and I'm like struggling along with this company, this little company that's, you know, three people in a closet trying to figure out, you know, what, what this is going to be and, and so with the mistake I think was obviously letting go of it and not sort of sticking with it but I wouldn't be where I was, to, where I am today had I gone down that road, I would not have done a lot of things. And, and just when I think back to it, my heart was in it, but this guy was in Toronto and he was really hustling and I was sort of sitting in Montreal being very reactive to something I couldn't control. And it wasn't, that's what I was going back to earlier, it didn't feel like it was right. It didn't feel like I was contributing half. I didn't feel like I was, I was doing as much as he was doing to make this a success. And so while I think many people, like when I tell the story, go, wow, like what a mistake. Like you didn't stick with it and that band became huge and, you know, Lord knows where you could have been. It, it wasn't the right thing to do. And, and ethically, I couldn't stand up and just keep running with it. So your gut was basically telling you to go down the twist image route. Yeah, and, and I do. I'm, I'm, very, um, I'm very emotional. I have very thin skin. And I, I do. I typically make decisions based off of what I want. And what I want isn't easily quantifiable, and I want this, 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 and this. It's not that strategic. It's gut. It's, um, it's a fantastic little story because, obviously, it's all turned out fine. You, you've got a very successful So business. far, I mean, well, you know, could, could I be downhill after now, Matthew? We'll see. It's very true, but we can never quite um, sort of count ourselves too lucky. But so far, it's been very good. And you've built this fantastic career from the sort of digital marketing side. You've got your own books, very successful blog. Uh, very well respected in the marketing world. But at that time, what were your sort of emotions when obviously you've just kind of had this crossroad? You could have gone down the music route. You could have gone down the digital marketing route. You chose digital marketing. You went with your gut. And then boom, the music thing just took off. And what did you have maybe some sort of second thoughts? Did you have some regrets then? Or did you just plow forward and go, no, that's in the past. Let's move. You know, I think if I were more of like a business shark, like a money person, I would have just said, I'm just sticking with it. Like I, there's no reason for me to call my business partner in Toronto at the label and say, listen, I think my heart is here. Let's work out a deal where I don't lose money on this and you can move forward without it being, you know, handcuffs around you because it's hard to move forward if you, if you had to buy someone else out. Mm. Uh, I felt like you're, you know, my contribution isn't at the same level. I, I could have just shut up. And just let it go and been like, oh, look, look, look at me riding along on this success. Um, so, so the regret is that from the business side, well, it wouldn't have been nice to have that. But that regret is diminished by the fact that ethically I feel like I did the right thing. 
And so I'm very much driven by, you know, what would my grandchildren or children think about these decisions? And I, you know, I think about that in little stupid things like what I tweet. So you can bet that when it comes to bigger things like, you know, whether or not I'm in the right place doing the right thing, I think that, you know, if my, if my, one of my kids were looking back on this, would they say, like, I'm proud of the way he conducted himself? And so I sort of live off of this desire to, to have a proud legacy. Thanks. It's a very good attitude to have. I think more people need that kind of attitude. So how did it affect you in terms of how you then approached your life with Twist Image and going forward in writing? Do you always kind of look at, back on that? Did you learn particular things where um, maybe your gut took you down this route and you, and you stuck by that decision? Has it kind of cemented the fact that you should listen to that gut feeling, those emotions, and, and I suppose follow the passion rather than the, the business sense, the money? Yeah, I don't know if it's passion. Like, there's a whole chapter in in the next book. The book is divided into two parts, and the first part of Control Alt Delete is about how to reboot business, and it talks about these sort of six movements or five movements that I've uncovered that I think have changed business forever that businesses aren't doing a lot about. And the second part of the book is called Reboot You, and it's about what do you need to be a viable entity working passionately in that type of, of world. And I talk a lot about the idea of squiggly, and the idea of squiggly is that it's not linear. It's not like, well, you know, you didn't do this, so that happened. I believe life and careers are very, very squiggly. So when I look at, at that, I don't go like, well, because of that, I feel like this. There's like a whole bunch of pieces that make mistakes, not mistakes. You know, mistakes are mistakes when you keep doing them and you don't learn from them and you don't evolve emotionally, intellectually, uh, personally. They're not mistakes if you did it, you got it, you moved on. Uh, mistakes and successes look very similar in that framework. And so I, I'm very, very cognizant of the fact that things are very squiggly. They're not cut and dry. The emotions sometimes are real. And a lot of times you can't necessarily connect things very directly. People are like, you know, why do you network? You don't walk into like a room and say to people, hire me. You walk into a room, you try and meet people, you try and be able to provide value to them. And then in the serendipity luck account of the world, you hope that things swing your way as well. And so it's just those sort of perspectives that I bring to it. I, I, I fear that when we talk about mistakes and success, they become these very linear conversations. And the truth is, I don't know. Uh, maybe that was a, a mistake and maybe it wasn't that. It was the fact that I once got fired, but even though I got fired, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And that led me to think a certain way, which then let, I, I don't know. And I, 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 you know, I wish we had the memory banks and technology to be able to track these things, but I don't think we can. It's interesting because it sounds, we are, we live in a very colorful world. It's not black and white. And just because you choose one way, doesn't mean it's going to cement your future in forever. There's, there's lots of different possibilities that can go down that route. So I can imagine a lot of people watching this will be thinking, right, here's a fairly sort of new sort of business person, sort of fairly young, new entrepreneur has two decisions. And a lot of people get this. They maybe have a choice between the music industry and or from one company to another. How how would you recommend them sort of push forwards and I guess live without that regret? Is is there a case of you weigh them up, you know, the positives versus the negatives, or do you just no. listen to your heart? What do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, I work off of two very. I'm a simple. People like always laugh when they speak to me, but I'm like very simple, and I always say I'm very dumb. So I try and do things as simply as possible. Uh, the first thing I do is I try and say yes to everything. Say yes to everything. Try everything. See. I mean, within a reason, obviously, yeah. but, but say yes to everything. And then the other thing, the other part of that equation is to go as far as you can go until you can't go any further. And I find that one is a lot of people just say no off the top and, and you don't know what you're cutting yourself out from. And then taking it as far as you can go until you can't take it any farther. You know, I, I run a digital marketing agency. You get this the request for proposals and RFP and RFI. And you sort of look at it and you go, well, you know, the budget isn't great or we might have a conflict with this or it might be – forget that. Let's go as far as we can go until we can't go any further. It might turn out that this relationship is a million times better than the one that may cause a conflict. We may realize that the one that may be a conflict was actually about to leave us anyways. Uh, many there's, – there's so many mitigating factors. And so I have found personally, not just in the business development part of Twist Image but in the work that I do, is I try and say yes to everything. 
and I try and take things as far as I can go until I can't go any further. And that's it. So, so simple. Just have a very nice open mind. Fantastic. And I am, I, it reminds me of a book I once read called Yes Man. I think it was turned into a movie as well. And it is amazing the power of yes when you just stay open to new challenges, new things. The things that that can lead to, the relationships, the opportunities, they can be great. And if you say no, you're, you're, you're basically putting a line in the sand and saying, I'm not going to be part of that. So, excellent. I mean, I don't, I don't know any business deal we've ever made, a twist image, any speaking opportunity I've had, any book deal uh, that I ever got because I said no. <laughs> That's very true. You can only get them from saying yes. Well, thank you very much. We're, ending, we're coming towards the end of it. I would just like one final question, if I may. I am interested, if you could offer one piece of advice to a young slash new entrepreneur, someone who's just thinking of starting out, what piece of advice would that be? Be overly helpful. Be overly helpful. I People go, oh, don't work on spec, don't work for free, uh, You know, people take advantage of you. I don't think so. I think that when you are overly helpful and when you're providing value that is beyond what anyone else is doing, you make yourself irreplaceable. And I, 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 you know, I, I can tell you this as somebody in their in their forties now. I know I look so much younger, but I am in my forties. That um, I only realized this maybe two years ago. I always thought I, I could be replaced. I could be someone else. And the truth is, I, I can be. I don't. I'm not. I don't have that big of an ego. But you want to be in a place where I'm, where you're, you, where you and I were providing so much value. That you can't fathom it. You can't fathom the business going on without this person. And you know, Jack Welsh would talk about this: the G, the A's, the B's, and the C's. Uh, you know, good to great, the right people on the right seat in the right bus. Jim Collins, things like that. It, I find it so lacking and anorexic in our society. It's like this is my job, this is what I do, and I'm head down in the work, and that's great and that's valuable. But when you are over over you know giving yourself in, in, in true abundance i think better things happen i absolutely agree and i think you prove that with your podcasts and blogs because you're probably at a level now where you sometimes think oh, i'm so busy you know should i take a step back but that value that you offer people it keeps them obviously you know keep buying your books keep recommending you to people and it'll just keep you open and where you do help and where you offer more than you take good things tend to happen you know, I'll, t I'll tell you the truth, though, Matthew. It's it's not true. Um, I don't ever take that step back. Uh, I I love the fact, and I cherish the fact that I have a platform by which, whether anyone reads it or, or listens or not, that I can have an idea and put that idea out to the world, blog or podcast or whatever it might be. Uh, I don't take that for granted and I don't take it lightly. And so every every day when, when I'm thinking about what to blog about or who should be the next guest, I don't think, well, maybe I should not, you know, blog six times a week. I, I spend my days, in fact, today I've got you know, we're on a Wednesday and I only blogged once and I'm just all I'm thinking about is when will I get the time today to get two done. Yeah. Most people are probably saying, let me get the one done and see how it goes. And it's not. I, I consider it a privilege to have this access and I don't want to abuse it. And at the same time, I also want to create a platform by which with the abundance of content I create that it, it, it forces everybody along with me to learn more and faster. And so it's a very different model. So I know there are, are other bloggers and podcasters who are like, maybe I should take it easy. But, you know, 10 years in and I don't, I don't feel that way at all. What a lovely outlook. And that's, that's so good to hear because... Um, you're right, there are many people who do start blogs for a specific reason, then once the money starts rolling in or they start getting offers elsewhere, they think, oh, well, I don't need it anymore. So it's fantastic to hear that. Well, thank you very much, Mitch. That was some fantastic advice. I'm sure those watching will um, appreciate it tenfold. And thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Viewer, for watching us have a little chat. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for the invite. Cheers. Excellent. Well, that is everything from my end. So thank you very much for doing that. That was um, that's so good. Thank you. You got it. And I appreciate all your comments. I should tell you, Matthew, that uh, when I first started seeing you comment and said Turn Dog Millionaire, I thought it was a spammer. I thought it was like <laughs> someone, someone like I would like delete it or, or kill your links and stuff. And then after a while, I was like, oh, I think this is actually a real human being. So, But I appreciate all your contributions because I know you contribute a ton to the blog. And I don't always respond, but I'm reading everything. And, and trust me, when your email came in, I knew exactly who you were. And I, I really do appreciate all your contributions. So thank you. 
Oh, thank you very much. Like I say, I love I love the blog, and it's it. You're one of the sort of few marketers who I follow where I feel like there's there's this kind of an alignment there. Everything that good. you tend to say, I'm always like nodding along, and it's six o'clock in the morning when I'm doing it, so that's good. So many that's, people that's out there. That's why I love doing it. So thank yeah, you. That's fantastic, and yeah, it is an in, it's an interesting name. It usually catches people out a little bit. <laughs> Well, cool. I appreciate your time, and uh, I can show you. I'm not lying. It's, oh, it's yeah, right please. here. It's it's got to go to the editor. So I got a jet. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, all the best with it, and I, I look forward to seeing that come out in May. So I'll send you another few emails in the next few days with more info. But any questions, just shoot. Thanks, man. Cheers. Right. Thank you. Bye. I see. Sure.